Hello. I am Eric and I'm playing a game called Exit Corners. It's a game I found on uh, Congregate. It looks fun. So, here we go. So, what's your name? Excuse me? I know nothing about you. I'd like to remedy that. So, what's your name? Ink. My name is Ink. Oh, what an unusual name. And where are you from, Ink? I'm from Bellbridge. Still there. Unfortunately, I'm enrolled in the local university. Ah, Bellbridge. Quaint little town, isn't it? Nice and quiet. For the most part, yeah, quiet. Do you like it there? No, not really. The second I graduate, I'm out of here. Till then, my life is going to consist of good books and cheap beer. I see. Say, do you hear the wind? Nah. Kinda. I can hear you just fine, but the wind sounds sort of muffled, distant. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? I I'm dreaming. Things don't need to make sense. Oh, how can you be so sure you're dreaming? Oh, I can see God. Hello, God. Well, for starters, I'm looking at myself square in the eye right now. I mean, unless there are two of me. That is impossible. And there's only one Ink Greer. Trust me, I checked. Um, hello? Oh, somebody's calling for you, it seems. Hey, wake up. Thanks for the chat. Oh, come on. Ink's cheek's dumb. Oh, that wasn't that one. Okay. I am in my bedroom. Ink found himself sitting upright on a cheap mattress, half buried in sheets and sore all over. He went to a twisting oh he went for a twisting stretch, placing his hand on his aching back. I ought to give myself a round of applause. Falling asleep fully clothed, jacket and everything. That's a new low. I must have passed right out. Ink took a moment to compose himself. As he wiped the sweat from his face, his eyes were drawn to a figure sitting next to him. It was a girl. Still drowsy, Ink stared at her in a hazy stupor. Morning, stranger. Sorry about the pinching you awake thing. You're a heavy sleeper, I guess. Anyways, I know this is sore sun, but, uh... I was hoping you'd know what's going on. Where are we, exactly? The question caught Ink off guard. He did his best to ignore what he assumed was a hangover, and tried to come up with an answer. Wait a second. Where am I? This isn't my bedroom! What's going on here? A hotel? It's a little old fashioned, but there's no mistaking it. How the hell did I wind up in a hotel? I got smashed like last night, or. Hey, are you okay? You seem really out of it. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just a bit disoriented, that's all. Ink examined his new companion. Who was she? Did I sleep with her or something? I mean, that'd be the obvious assumption. I guess there's only one way to know for sure. Listen, uh... Do you happen to remember anything from last night? Oh, well, um... The girl trailed off. and couldn't help but steal an admiring glance during the silence. She sure is cute, whoever she is. I wonder where we met. Ink was desperate to know more about her. He couldn't make a quick guess, judging from her age and appearance. He had a hunch that she, too, was a student at Bellbridge University. We probably met on campus. No, wait, that couldn't have been it. If we got a room, we must have been downtown somewhere. Why can't I remember anything? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember a single thing about last night, and I'm pretty sure I don't know you either. That was not, that was not a girl. 
She can't remember anything either, huh? Give me a break. He managed to crack a smile in spite of his frustration. The least he could do was try to say something, try and quell the uneasy feeling in his gut. Might as well introduce myself. I'm Ink. Well then, it's nice to meet you, Ink. Heh, <laughs> I know. I don't get nice to meet you all that often. Most people just comment on how weird my name is. If it makes you feel any better, my name's pretty weird too. I'm Aether. I must I I must admit I haven't met anyone by the name of Aether before. I like it though. Is it spelled A E T H E R? Yep. You wouldn't believe how many people pronounce it wrong. Two people share a gentle laugh. Ink slumped back on the headrest and sank into comfortable sounds. Alright, Ink, let's retrace our steps a bit. What's the last thing you remember before waking up? Let's see. Ink scratched his head. The simple task of remembering was proving more difficult than he had anticipated. Well, I guess I don't remember going to bed, so I can't rule out the possibility that I had gone out drinking. I got a week off after all. Wait. What am I even saying? This doesn't make any sense. Well, I'm pretty sure today is the 19th. Most students have the week off. Oh, yeah. Were you out for a night on the town? That's the thing. I told myself I wouldn't be going out this week. I was going to use the time to catch up on schoolwork. I'm pretty sure that last night I was ho I was holed up in my room to study. Weird. Pretty lame, huh? What kind of student actually spends his week off studying? No, that's not it. If yesterday was the 19th, then I don't think I went out either. If neither of us were out last night, what are we doing here? Is today even the 19th? I guess I'd better make sure. Ink lifted himself off the bed. It was the only one he was standing up that he realized something was off. Ink could usually feel the weight of his cell phone, wallet, and keys on his person. But today, he felt especially light. He patted himself down, but did no good. His jacket pockets had nothing in them. Ink scanned the room, searching the bed floor and armoire for his belongings. He came up empty. Damn it, where's all my stuff? Curiosity, Ink did find something tucked away in his jeans pocket. He reached for it. The object he pulled out was alien to him. A device which resembled an old PDA had the date written across the screen. 379. It's also 2019. I like that. 379? What the hell? No, that must be a 1, not a 7. Man, I'm out of it. That looks like a 17 to me. So, it is March 19th. That's one problem solved. But what is this thing? And where's my phone? Don't tell me you got one, too. This isn't mine. My phone looks nothing like this. Wow, she was again. She's got the exact same model. My smartphone seems to be swapped out for... One of these. Whatever it is. Really? That's too weird. Think they were handing them out somewhere? I am a sucker for free stuff. I don't know about that. Ink examined the PDA further. It appeared that the only menu op option was contact. This device had like 99% of its features removed. It's only letting me go to the contacts menu. It's... Scratch that. Contact. Singular. Seen rotary phones with more features than this whole thing. <laughs> well, let's see if contact actually does anything. Ink soon realized why the word contact was in pluralized. There was a single name in it. Sean Ward. Sean. Finally something familiar. Sean? Who's that? He's a good friend of mine. I'm gonna text him see if he knows what happened last night. He might have the scoop on these PDAs as well. Oh, I see. Something the matter? Uh, nothing really. It's just that the only person on my PDA contact list is my dad. Did you show him a text? Nah. He'd be pretty mad if I told him I woke up in a hotel with some boy I don't know. Maybe you should send him something anyway. He might be worried about you. Yeah, you're probably right. Let's see if this thing actually works. Sean, this is Ink. You there? Uh, 
um, Sean, oh, dang, what's with this? What's with the hot? What's with this PDA? Did you put it here? What do you mean? Weren't you the one that left it with me? What the hell are you talking about? This piece of junk was in my mailbox this morning, no return address. You're the only name in the contact list, and it doesn't seem to be able to do anything except send and receive text from you. I tried texting you earlier to ask you about it, but you never got back to me. Am I wrong in assuming that this is from you? You still there, Brock? Yeah, I don't know what to say. It's just some kind of prank. Prank? You're the only one who's pulled my leg, buddy. Cut the crap. Just tell me what happened last night. I honestly, I have no idea what you're talking about. Not sure I wound up with this thing. I assume you knew something since your name was in the contact list. Let me get this straight. You somehow wound up with a PDA that doesn't belong to you. Which you're using to message me right now, is that correct? Yep. Then we're in the exact same situation. You have a PDA of unknown origin that only can send and receive text from you. Are you serious? Of course I am serious. Are you being serious? This is not one of your jokes. That's a negative, Brando. Trust me, I'm just as confused as you are. Do you remember what you were doing last night? Yeah, I was bar hopping out with some of our friends. Nothing out of the ordinary. Don't remember running into you, though. Well, if you're telling the truth, then some of them must have given us one of these to each of us. Weird, do you have any idea where they came from? No, sorry. By the way, where are you right now? Dorm. And did anything out of the ordinary happen to you yesterday, today, whatever? Nah, I've just been chip posting, you know, where we're all moaning. Where do you ask? Right. I'm at a hotel with some girl I never met. Not sure I got here. Ooh, who's the lucky lady? She must be real special. She got to leave your room on a weekend day. Proud of you. Hey, it's not like that. I don't remember anything from last night. Now does she. Sure, buddy. Wink. Come back to campus. I want to have a chat with you and your lady friend. Once I get my bearings, I'll be heading back. Anyway, text me if you remember anything about these PD. Hey, talk to you later. See ya. Tuck the PDA back into his pocket. Ink turned to the new acquaintance. The acquaintance. I said that right. Ink suspected that she may not have contacted her father at all, but suppose it's none of his business. So, what now? Just, uh, give me a moment to think this through. Ink sunk his head into his hands. He took a series of deep breaths and mulled over what to do next. I need to figure out what happened to my wallet and phone before I do anything else. They aren't in this room, I know that much. They're impossible, I left them in my dorm or at a bar. But without my phone, it'll be hard to ask around about them. And this is going to be a huge pain in the ass. You don't need to wait on me, you know. I was sort of hoping we'd be able to figure out what happened last night. You know, like, together? Right. I guess that'd be the sensible thing to do. Oh, don't look so glum. It'll be fun. Think of it like a real-life mystery novel. We'd make a pretty badass crime fight duo, don't you think? You want to be the grizzled detective or the quirky sidekick? Star roll. If I had to pick, I guess I'd be a, a, the detective. Not sure if I'd consider myself grizzled, though. <laughs> I guess that makes me the sidekick. I don't mind if you take charge, but I'll be real upset if you don't come up with a snappy catchphrase. Ink found himself smiling. Aether's enthusiasm was contagious. All right, then, my trusty sidekick. I'm thinking we ought to head out. Is there anything else you need to take care of before we leave? Nope. After you, detective. A frame on the wall caught Ink's attention as he was leaving. Four Elements, Hotel and Suites. Hey, that's the name of the chapter. The Four Elements Hotel, huh? That's what it says. I don't suppose these are Four Elements Hotel in Belbridge. Do you live in Belbridge by any chance? Well, yeah, I'm a psych student at Belbridge U. Ha! Looks like my guess was right. Though I wasn't supposed to as much of a stretch. You don't say. What year? I'm just a freshman. I haven't even chosen a psych specialization yet. I live on the dorms on campus. Well, then it looks like we're heading for the same direction. Except. Except? I'm not sure I like the way you said that. Except I'm sure that there's no call hotel called the Four Elements anywhere in Belbridge. What? Where are we then? Beats me. Ink pressed his palm hard against his forehead to attempt to jog his memory, but all it did was worsen his headache. He let out a loud sigh. 
Maybe we should head to the reception desk. At the, at the very least, we can find out what city we're in. Yeah, good idea. With any luck, they'll have a lost and found, too. With Aether and Toe, Ink cracked the door open and made his way into the hallway. Hey, I'm in! A large, eerie blue monitor was the first thing to grab Ink's attention. What's it doing in the hallway? Oh, that's not a window. Transfixed on the screen, Ink was slow to notice that he and Aether weren't alone. The right of the monitor were two people, both of whom approached him. On the right was a disheveled man in his mid twenties. The one on his left was an elderly woman with calm countenance. Ink stared right back at them wide eyed. Looks like you were right. Hmm. Oh, that was the truck door. The man sp sporting a hoodie. That's okay, yeah. Look back at the other side of the monitor. Would you two mind coming over here? You mean you mean us? Yeah, I need your help with something. Ink and Aether edged closer to him at slow pace, but the young man's request had Ink feeling uneasy. Before they arrived at the end of the hallway, Ink made a request of his own. Could you maybe find someone to help us? Someone else to help? I don't mean to be a pain, but my friend and I had a little bit of a rough night and need to get back home as soon as possible. Yeah, well, good luck with that, Ink scowled. Grabbing Aether by the wrist, he hurriedly cut between the two strangers. He reached the door leading out. Locked. It, it's locked. See what I tell ya. This can't be the right way out of the hotel. Come on, we should check the other side of the hall. We've already had a look around. The doors are all locked, I'm afraid. They can only be open from the other side. Oh, lovely. As much as Ink wanted to believe the old woman was his pulling his leg, the sternness in her voice suggested otherwise. Then what? We're trapped here? For now. I try kicking the doors down, but we won't get anywhere fast. It's like it's sealed tight. Where's this all, where are the staff? Does the front desk know that this part of the hotel has been sectioned off? I've been able to get a hold of my staff, but I doubt that anyone even works here anymore. So that's hardly a surprise. I guess we gotta wait for the last person to wake up. Last person? What are you talking about? The stranger let out a sign and pointed to the screen. Contestants, to have I wish I could do something other than ask questions, but this is officially standing away. Contestants, two of five. What the hell does that mean? I would assume that refers to us. Couldn't be. Put your hand on the, uh, thing. Ink complied. Contestants, three of five. The screen produced a quizzical beep. The display updated and Ink's heart sank. Three out of five. Well, that sells it. I guess you're contestant after all. As a heads up, I did not sign up for this, whatever this is. Yeah, and I bet you never had your handprint taken either, but there you go. Anyways, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that that computer and door are connected. I think it'll unlock once it says 5 out of 5. Ink was at a loss for words, and he tried to vain and remember what he had done to wind up here. Aether placed her hand on the screen, which now read, Contestants, 4 out of 5. Thanks. I... I just wanted to go home. It had taken a while for Ink to notice, but Aether had grown much quieter all of a sudden. I noticed that. Was she scared, shy, or just bewildered? Whatever the case, Ink figured it'd be best to get everyone acquainted and attempt to cheer Aether up. Um, if we're gonna have to wait for fifth person, we might as well introduce ourselves. I'm Ink. Your name is Ink. I-N-K. Is that your real name or just a nickname? That's the real deal. My full legal, my full legal name is Ink Greer. I study English at Bellbridge University. I go to Bellbridge University, too. I'm a first-year psych student. Oh, I forgot to say my name, didn't I? Yeah, I'm Aether. My name is Beth. Beth March. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Strange circumstances aside, the pleasure's all mine, Beth. Following Aether's lead, Ink shot the old woman's small nod and phony smile. My name's Ray. I'm a programmer. Freelance. If you want something done quickly and done right, I'm the guy. You sound pretty sure of yourself. Are you famous or something? I ought to be. I'm good at what I do. Real good. Did you graduate from Belbridge U? I heard good things about the computer science program. I was enrolled there for a bit. I dropped out. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. You can stop right there. I don't want your pity. Uh, I'm doing just fine without a degree. If anything, I should be pinning you for attending that joke of a school. Joke of a school? You guys are too young to understand, but one day you'll come to realize that your school is absolute trash. I can think of a thousand better ways to spend your time. A million pair of ways to spend your money. Well, 
Yeah. Aether looked as though she had something to say, but was too afraid to speak up. Ingua loved to shut Ray up with a snappy retort for insulting his school, but it was unusual. It was unable to come up with anything clever. Just some friendly advice for you. The people that were on that school- Oh. The, the, the sound of the closing door interrupting a mumbling ray. Curious Ink looked about the room. A girl, perhaps a few years younger than Ink, had emerged from a door to his right. She glared at Ink and a few seconds turned to Ray. You. What? You're Ray, I take it? Yeah, that's me. New girl gave Ray a dirty look. She had a haughty air about her. Eh, she she looks nice. Wait, how do you know my name? How long have you been eavesdropping on us? Pretty much this whole time. Eavesdropping? Why do that? Isn't it obvious? When you've been kidnapped, the most important thing is to find as much about you can about your captors. You guys weren't saying anything useful though, so I thought I'd just let you know I was awake. You can ransom me off now. Chop chop. What makes you so sure we're the kidnappers? I don't see how you could come to that conclusion from listening to our conversation. I certainly don't remember entering this hotel, which means that someone brought me here. Disgusting as that thought that may be. Can you think of any reasons why someone would want to kidnap you? I'm sure you're already aware of this, but my father and I are quite wealthy. Well, that was blunt. There's no use trying to trick me by talking about contestants or any of that nonsense. I have a feeling that someone would try this eventually. I already notified my father and he says he'll pay whatever you demand. You already notified him? How? Girl reached her back, pulled out a familiar trinket. The only thing this device seems to be able to do is contact my father. An intentional modification, I'm sure. You got one too, huh? Man, it's just my luck. Ah, uh, that's what these things are. Wait, so everyone was given a PDA? Silence. Contestants all eyed each other. Just to make sure, does anyone have any idea how they wound up here? Nope. Nope. I'm afraid not. Nobody? Awesome. Just awesome. For the record, isn't it too late to admit you kidnapped me, act clueless? How predictable. I can't blame her for being cautious, but there's a fine line between caution and paranoia. Let's see if I can get her to open up a little. Could you at least tell us your name? It's Lisa. Thought you didn't. Though, we all know you didn't have to ask. Cool, Lisa, could you put your hand on the screen there? Absolutely not! Why would I help my captors? We didn't kidnap you, okay? Get that through your skull. Heh, <laughs> do you really expect me to trust some smarmy thug like you? You wanna say that again? Just put your hand on that screen so we can open the damn door. You know what? I don't like your attitude. My attitude? You're the one who isn't cooperating. Seriously, could you be any more obnoxious? Well, now I'm definitely not opening the door. It's probably some sort of kidnapper scheme anyways. Lisa, did you ever consider that the rest of us might also have been kidnapped? Exactly. Maybe I'm getting ransomed off too. Ever think of that? Yeah, because when I think of people who'd be worth abducting, the first thing that comes to mind is that adult university dropout. You know what my father says about people like you? This is the people who quit shouldn't even bother to try. Oh, f*** off. You don't know a single thing about me. Stop, both of you. Beth, who had remained quiet for a time, interjected with surprising ferocity. Her rage disappears as quickly as it manifested. I don't think yelling at one another is going to get us anywhere. Lisa, even if we were your captors, why would we trap ourselves in the same room as you? When we want to avoid seeing our faces? But, I... I suppose you have a point. And, Ray, would you mind being a bit more courteous to young lady? She's in the same situation as the rest of us. I'm sure you can understand how stressful this is. Yeah, whatever. Now, will you two apologize to each other? The two mumbled at each other. Ain't doubted either of them had actually said the word sorry, but Beth seemed happy enough that they were finished arguing. Wonderful. Now, Lisa, could you place your hand on the computer screen, please? Silently, Lisa did as she was asked. The screen went blank. Then, out of nowhere, it appeared. Oh my, what on earth is that? It's uncanny as hell, whatever it is. Hello? Who are you? The terminal made a low humming sound before a hollow synthetic voice took over. Please note that the following message is recording that will only play one. It is advisable that you pay attention. Did that thing say something? Shut up. Didn't you hear it? It's about to speak. Salutations, contestants. 
I pray you had a most wonderful sleep. You're probably wondering why you're here, actually. You're probably wondering many things. Fret not, contestants, for I have the answers you seek. Regrettably, I cannot divulge anything right now. You only have just woken up. I'm afraid some of the things I have to share are rather complicated. This is not the time nor the place to provide contestants with information, and for that, I must apologize. I am sorry. I'm so very sorry. In order to prove that everyone that I am in fact very sorry, I've arranged a fun little puzzle for my favorite contestants. I am, of course, referring to the five of you. I think it will break the ice quite nicely. Please do your best to solve it. Your instructions can be found in the top right corner of the screen. Once you think you've solved it, please press the check solution button. Then place your hand on the screen to confirm your answer. Good luck, have fun, contestants. Oh, and I suppose you should mention that the door to the next room won't unlock till you've completed the puzzle. So yes, the puzzle's more or less mandatory. Oh, Chris, what are those? Aren't you listening? It's a puzzle. Looks tile-based. But why? It seems so unnecessary. Well, that thing did call us contestants. It's pretty clear that this is some sort of game. This is stupid. Please tell me none of you actually intended to go through with this. Listen, I don't really know what's going on, but I want to get you out of here as fast as possible. I'm giving this thing a go. It can't hurt to try, right? Oh, so, of course, I'm the only one. Uh, okay. Plus... Aether, what do you think? Hmm... Any ideas? Well, that strange polygonal face of the instructions would be in the top right screen. I see that. I guess our instructions are to turn a square into a cross. Uh-huh. That doesn't look like the pieces fit together to make one. You think they got the pieces? Well, no, this is deliberate, I'm sure. Let's do some sort of trash. Oh, I feel like I've done this before. So let's just reassemble this square. Turn it into a cross. I I swear I've done this before. But Beth. I would like to help if I can, Ink. Eh? Awesome, Beth, I'd appreciate it. So is this some kind of jigsaw puzzle? I guess so, but something seems odd about it. Absolutely, how are you even supposed to move the pieces? Uh, uh, it's a touch thing. I could switch the location of any two pieces around by tapping one, then tapping the other. I, uh, thought that would be pretty obvious. Sorry, I'm ashamed to say that I'm not very up to date on these things. No, no, it's fine. And then once we solve it, press the check solution button. That's the gist of it. I don't think there's a limit to how many times you can check, so we shouldn't be afraid to try out answers. See, thank you, Ink. I know she wanted to help, but this is kind of distracting. Ray, what do you use? Oh, Ray probably has it. So, what does a top-notch computer programmer think of his puzzle? That's it. It's pretty obvious that there's some kind of trick to it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I said to assemble a cross, but you can't do that with four squares. Right. Oh, and by the way, Ink, uh, me being a programmer doesn't increase the likelihood of me being able to solve this puzzle. Oh, why not? Programming is all about logic, structure, and general problem solving. This seems more like a riddle. Something meant to trick people. Ah, uh, well, if that's the case, then forget I said anything. Nah, don't worry, I'm gonna figure it out anyway. Is that so? We got enough mental muscle for five of us. Riddles are easy. Let's see if he can put his money where his mouth is. Yeah, why don't we do Square. Well, I'm back to square mode. What if I just keep tapping? Just... Lisa's got something. At least any thoughts in this puzzle? No. Is that all you're gonna say? Yep. Can you at least try to be a bit more supportive? Listen, this isn't my problem. You figure it out. You know, if we don't get this door open, we're stuck here, right? I don't want to be disturbed right now, okay? How much more obvious do you need me to make it? Okay, okay. Sorry I asked. Wow, she was the least amount of help possible. Okay. 
Oh yeah, that was, I was overthinking that. There, got it. Wait, how's that the solution? If you look at the negative space in the center of the puzzle, you can make it across. Oh, I get it, I never thought of doing it that way. Neat, that wasn't so bad. Well done, contestants, well done indeed. You again. Please note that this is once again a recording and that it will only play once. Hmm. It appears that you've solved the puzzle I left for you. I pray that you all had fun. I'm sure you're all eager to know why you're here. The truth is that this cramped hallway is ill-suited for such a conversation. I know, I know. You got your hopes up for nothing, and for that I'm truly sorry. Truly allowed to make it up to you. Well, uh, the door is unlocked. The next room is fine. The lounge, a much more fitting place to disclose the rules of our wonderful game. I shall wait you there. Go, move forwards. Or you could die. It was clear that the polygonal figure wasn't coming back, but Ink had trouble turning away. Last message had left him more confused and anxious than ever. The sound door opening managed to redirect Ink's gaze. As he looked around the room, he realized that there was there were one contestant short. Beth Ray already split. Beth and Lisa followed him and shortly worse. Ink? Yeah? You think that guy's being serious when he said, or you could die? Don't look at you, Aether. Hopefully this is some jerk's idea of a joke. A cruel and needlessly complicated joke. If it is a joke, I'm sure it isn't funny. Yeah, definitely not funny. But if it isn't funny, then why do I feel like laughing all of a sudden? Because none of this makes a lick of sense? Sure, let's go with that. Maybe this is all just strange dream. Oh my gosh, ink! Hmm, what is it? You're bleeding! Instinctively, Ink brought his hand to his nose. Sure enough, he felt a slick, warm substance that could only be his own blood. Where? Didn't he feel it? Ink stared at the blood on his hand more curiously than concerned. Then he felt it. It was the heavy, throbbing pain in his chest, growing, rising. What's wrong? He don't look so good. Feels like there, there's something inside. Inside? What do you mean, inside? Ink couldn't focus enough to reply. Something was pounding against his ribcage from within. He felt as if his heart was trying to escape his life. What, what's that? Ah! Trying to talk was useless, and couldn't finish thought, much less speak when it only been a few seconds of pain had already taken all other feeling. That's not good! Caught in agony, Ink clutched his chest, shut his eyes, and nearly blacked out. He vomited. Oh, I'm- I'm puking blood! What the actual- Ink stared at his hand, terrified. What happened to me? End chapter. And I feel like this is a good stopping point for the day. So this was Exit Corners, and I'll see you in the next video.